welcome back to my channel and to another video and so in this one I'm going to be going through 10 ways that you guys can improve your coloured pencil drawings make them look even better because I know a lot of you follow me for my coloured pencil tutorials and advice videos and it's been a while since I've done like an overall tips and advice video for coloured pencils so I thought it was about time that I do one of them for you guys today so whilst I'm talking about that in the background you're going to be seeing a speed drawing of a recent coloured pencil portrait that I've been working on recently and that is of Will Smith if you follow me on Instagram you've probably seen me do loads of work in progress shots of it over on there but that's what you're going to be seeing in the background if you do want to see a more real time tutorial series for that drawing follow me through every single minute of the process from start to finish all eight hours then they are available on my Patreon as well as loads of other coloured pencil tutorial series so if you do want to master coloured pencils and learn even more about my techniques then I do recommend checking out my Patreon link will be in the description but anyway guys let's get on with today's topic okay so let's get straight on to it with tip number one and that is when it comes to choosing the right colored pencils for you and by this I don't just mean getting really good quality colored pencils I mean choosing the colored pencils that will suit your needs and what kind of things you want to draw because different colored pencil brands have different sort of properties to them some are more creamier than others so for example the Prismacolor pencils and the Caran d'Ache Luminance are a lot creamier and smooth than say the Faber-Castell Polychromos but because they're so smooth it means it's harder to keep that point really sharp and get those fine details whereas the Faber-Castell Polychromos are a lot sort of harder and they just keep their point a lot better so they're better for doing like detailed work if you want to do like animals with lots of fur then I like the Faber-Castell Polychromos. So choosing the right sort of colour pencils for what you actually want to do is so important because you could get colour pencils that are really good quality but aren't really best suited to what you want to do. So in general, I really recommend Prismacolors or Caran d'Ache Luminance if you want to do like portraits or stuff where you want to get really smooth blending and a creamy finish and just really soft work. If you want more detail and sort of texture, then I really like the Faber-Castell Polychromos. But that's not to say that you can't do all of these types of things with each brand of coloured pencil. You can do great animal work with Prismacolors and Caran d'Ache. You can do great portraits with Faber-Castell Polychromos. But there might be a coloured pencil brand that is better suited to what you want to do over the other ones, which might slightly sway your decision when you go to buying the coloured pencils. I do recommend going for the better quality coloured pencils over really cheap ones like Crayolas and just really cheap brands because it's basically like working with a different medium if you get really cheap pencils because they don't blend as well, they don't layer as well and they are a lot more limited with what you can do with them and the results you can get. But you don't have to go for the top tier most expensive brand. Prismacolors are quite affordable and they're really good quality so they are a great option if you're a beginner. So straight on to tip number two and that is the paper that you're using. So colour pencils themselves are so important but the next most important thing is the paper that you're using because this decides how many layers you can put down, the blending you get, the finish you get. You know if you have hardly any texture to your paper then you can get a smoother result than if you have really really textured like cold press watercolour paper for example. And this depends on what sort of outcome you're looking for. If you're doing portraits, you might want to have really smooth paper. If you're doing something where you want lots of texture, then you might want to go for a more textured paper. And so it's really important to get a paper that best suits what you're trying to do. One thing that you should also bear in mind is if you're to get a smoother type of paper, then technically you can get less layers on that paper because it's smoother, there's less sort of tooth to it to grip onto the colour pencil. So there is a lot of things that you have to bear in mind when you try to pick your paper. It shouldn't be something that you just like pick any old paper. It should be something that you actually think about and really research into the paper that you want to get. So moving on to tip number three and that is to have a really accurate sketch and a really light sketch as well. So having a really accurate sketch is the foundation to a good colour pencil drawing. You need to have your proportions right and everything really accurate how you want it with the sketch before you go in and add the colour. So make sure that you're happy with the sketch and that there's nothing that you want to change before you move on to doing the colouring process because it's hard to erase colour pencil a lot harder than it is with graphite. So you want to make sure that you're 
your proportions, anatomy, all of that stuff is spot on and you're happy with the sketch. So when you do your sketch as well, make sure that you keep it light. Don't do really dark lines because you don't want the graphite pencil to show through the lighter layers of colored pencil on top. I like to go over it with a kneaded eraser at the end once I've finished it just to lighten it up before I add colored pencil to that area. And that really helps to prevent the graphite pencil showing through the colored pencil layers. So moving on to tip number four, and that is to always keep your pencil sharp. It is so important to have sharp pencils to get the detail. And also when you're layering and blending, you want to fill in all of the white bits of the paper. So it's so important to keep your pencil sharp so that when you do your circular motions, if that's how you're applying the pencil in like lots of circles to shade in the areas with colored pencil, it's important to keep that pencil sharp so it does go into all of those like dips and valleys of the paper so you can get a really smooth finish and you can also get into all of those white bits of the paper a lot easier you don't have to just press really hard just to push that pencil into it like you would have to if the pencil was really blunt so it is really important to make sure that you're keeping your pencils as sharp as possible so tip five is to layer your colors layering is so important in color pencil drawing it is one of the most important things that there is because if you don't layer your colors then it's just going to look sort of flat there's not going to be much life to your drawings if you're just using like one block color for each area you need to layer different colors to get the depth the variety and just to make it look a lot nicer than just having one color it makes it more interesting so try to layer colors mix colors to get the color that you want you might not have a exactly the color that you need like in your reference image so you might have to layer and mix colors to get the desired color that you want or just in general for example if you're working on skin you can see here when I'm coloring in his skin I'm not using just one color across the whole thing and then like lightening up certain areas and darkening other areas I'm using loads of different tones different hues of colors to build up the skin make it look full of life give it that glow and that is so important especially if you're going for realism or anything really just to make it look like it really pops and just to make it more interesting rather than it just having one tone across the whole thing unless you're doing something like cartoons where it is one block color mainly if you're going for realism then you'll want to use lots of different colors lay them up build up the colors just to get the realistic look that you need because in a lot of realistic everyday objects there's loads of different colors to make up the whole entire image it's not just one color in one area there's lots of different shades values hues and everything to make up the colors and that's why people find it tricky to work in color pencils because you've not only got to deal with the light and darkness of the color but the different hues as well so tip number six is to think about the ways that you want to blend the color pencil so blending is really important in color pencil drawings otherwise you'll get that white sort of grainy look and it will just look really grainy if you don't blend it how you want to so there's lots of different ways that you can go about blending color pencil you have the burnishing technique where you just push down hard into the paper you can blend with solvents blending sort of sticks like colorless blenders there's lots of different ways to blend the color pencil and you need to decide what will work for what you want to do so a couple of ways that I recommend is if you're doing portraits and you're using a creamy pencil then I like to use the burnishing method like I'm doing here if I'm doing animals and I want to layer different sort of textures like if I'm doing fur and I want to add a base tone and then add fur texture on top then I always use a solvent because you can add lighter colors over darker colors a lot easier because you're blending it out with a like paint thinner or odorless mineral spirit or something like that and it kind of dilutes the pigment into the paper and then you can add the color over the top so that's great if you're doing animals so really think and plan out your techniques before you just dive into the color pencil portrait because it isn't a very forgiving medium so you need to make sure that you're positive about the techniques that you want to use for your drawing so looking into blending techniques is really important and i have lots of videos on all of this stuff which i'll link at the end as well in a playlist so on to tip number seven and that is don't rush the main mistake that I see people make is they rush their color pencil drawings they don't spend the time needed to blend layer and choose materials and all of this sort of stuff whereas color pencil is a slow process it's a slow medium to work in so just spend those extra few hours really building up the details focusing on blending and layering don't rush it take it slow and you'll get a much better result and most of my portraits take between 10 15 hours if I'm doing like an animal portrait with the whole 
background that can take up to 50 hours it's a very slow medium to work in and if you don't like working slow then I recommend choosing a different medium because this is a slow medium to work in that's just how it is. So tip number eight is to identify your dark areas in your reference photo and your most highlighted areas before you start doing the colored pencil process and coloring it in because it's so important to get the contrast right in your drawing if you want it to pop and not look too flat. So it's all great if you get the color sort of hues right but if you don't get the darks dark enough and the highlights light enough then it won't look realistic, it won't pop out as much. So colors aren't as important, getting the perfect match in colors isn't as important as getting your values right getting your darks really dark as they need to be and having your highlights nice and bright tip number nine is a quick one and that's to invest in an exacto knife which i love to create details like you see me doing the facial hair i'll be having a tutorial come out on that in a few days of how i use that but it's a cheap tool and it is so good for doing hair facial hair eyebrows all of that sort of stuff or just getting details with that exacto knife to get some highlights and finally, tip number 10 is to not press really hard on your colour pencil straight away. You'll damage the tooth of the paper and it'll be hard to reverse that process if you go wrong. But anyway guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, the Real Time Tutorial Series is available on Patreon, as well as loads of other portrait tutorial series in graphite coloured pencils so that you can follow along with me every single step of the way and learn with me and ask me anything that you want. I've also got tutorial series on drawing animals, how I do the blending, all the things that I've talked about in this video. Anyway guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope you found it useful. If you did and you're new around here, why not hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on my future videos. Also, I've got a link to my Patreon over there if you wanna check out those tutorial series in real time. But that's it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.